A good die harders Wednesday night, huh? So happy to see all of you here. And I am always, it's always a privilege when God gives me an opportunity to share a word. It's always a privilege, not only that, but it's always a privilege to serve God. That, in any area of, of ministry where we are, isn't it? It's even a more privilege to give when it comes to our finances because we work so hard for it. Isn't it? Hallelujah. So I will, I will open up in a word of uh, prayer and then we'll um, get into it. Ready? Yes. Heavenly Father, so grateful, Lord, for this night. Grateful, Father, for being gathered here in your name. When two or more people are gathered in your name, you are here, Jesus. And we are so grateful for, be, for you being in this place. And I just surrender myself to you, Lord, and every single person that is in here. And just speak through me, think through me, Lord, and just touch every single person, Father, in this place. I pray that you will not let any person to get out of this place the same way that they came in. But they will leave this place transformed. Hallelujah, Father, by your word and fully, fully, fully free, Lord, from any bondage that they came in with. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what I'm going to talk tonight is something that God has been pressing a lot in my heart, especially in the last, almost the last two weeks. And it uh, has been the word overcomer. And the reason why God has been pressing this in my heart in the last two weeks is because we, we actually, uh, as Christians, uh, how do I say this? There is a recurring pressure to quit in life, to quit in our marriages, to quit in our, in, our, in our working places, to quit in our relationship, to quit in our friendship. There is a recurring process to like just throw the towel in, just to give up and to quit. And for this reason, God is calling us tonight that you can't quit. You can't go back and you can't quit. And God tonight wants to teach us that how can we live a, a life not as defeated. Because this pressure of quitting that is upon us actually leads us to live a life as Christian as defeated. When I'm talking about a life as defeated, full of anger, full of bitterness, full of unforgiveness, mad at God, mad at people mad at ourselves and we walk as defeated and the reason why God wants to do that because his heart is crying for us not to walk that way as defeated people but in the same time God has called us to be a witness right so when people that are not a Christian they look at us and when they see that we are walking all the time complaining and crying and defeated and by going here and there all the time right like walking in a way that, that nothing, nothing is good about our lives. And when people that are not Christians sees that, what do they do? They're actually going to be like, dang, that's a Christian life. I don't want to give my life to a God like that. My life is better than a Christian life. And that's the reason why it's very important that, uh, to, to understand where we are in. To understand that when a difficulty and a trial hits in, how are we handling it? We have become a generation that it's very easy to just throw in the towel. If everything hits us. If a, if a difficulty hits us, we just throw in the towel. Now Jesus want, wants to teach us how to live a life from a place of victory, not from a place of victim. How to live a life of a conquered life. Right? And not only because of us, because he loves us so much and he doesn't want to see us uh, 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 live a miserable life. Because Jesus did not die on the cross for us to live a miserable life, did he? Right? He did not, he did not took all those beating, all the suffering on the cross so we can live a miserable life. That's why he wants to awaken us today and to speak to us that we can and we will live from a place of victory. And not from the place of victim. Amen. And the reason why is because, because not only, as I said before, not only cares about our lives, but he cares about the life of every single person in the earth. He doesn't want anyone to per perish, but he wants everyone to have an everlasting life. How it is written, this was the last commandment of Jesus before he went to heaven. And you know what was it? In Acts 1.8, we see that. 
just right before he ascended, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. God wants our life when, because he cares for you to be healthy, but he cares for you to be healthy so those around you can see God in you and they can be saved through you. But we cannot be, we cannot be a witness if we are walking as defeated, because when we walk as defeated, then when we receive the power of the Holy Spirit, it cannot flow through us because we paralyze it. So people cannot see God through us. We can't save people. Only God can save people. It's only the power of God that can save people. What we are, we are just a vessel. But this vessel cannot function if we are in the place of defeat. This, this vessel cannot release the power of God if I'm paralyzing it with my own problems, with my own issues, with my own bitterness and unforgiveness and pain all the time 24-7. And that's where God is calling us today. Now, but you say, Ariona, the struggle is real. Even Jesus' disciples, they had problems and difficulties. Yes. Yes, I know the pain is real. I know. I know the pain is real. I know that, that when, uh, when, when something tragic happens, oh, man, it's, it, 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 it's real. But did God promise us that we will have a life without problems? Did he? No, right? Did God promise us that I will never leave you? I will never forsake you? He did, right? Did God promise us in Romans? Can you please put my picture? In Romans 8, 37, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. Through him. Through whom? Yes. Who is him? God. Jesus. Through Jesus who loved us. So we are more than conquerors. Through Jesus, you are not conquerors through yourself. Through what we do. But we have already been conquered through him. Through what he did on the cross for us. He promised this to us. Amen. So this is what we're going to explore today. How I can become an overcomer. Through him. Through Jesus. And how to learn to live an everyday life from a place of victory and not victim. And how can we learn to burn this towel and never go back to it again. Because this for us is never an option. This will never be an option. This cannot even exist for us as Christians. You know why? Because Jesus already died on the cross. He already he already bought our victory with his life. Amen. Amen. This topic actually hits home to me. The reason why, because I, have came, I, I, have, I came to the United States nine years ago from Europe. And I left home. I left everything just to, just to be a vessel in God's hands so God can use me. It has been tough. Struggle after struggle after struggle after struggle after struggle, never ending. Hasn't been easy at all. I had to learn to live a Christian life knowing that the struggles were never teased. I had to learn to live a Christian life knowing that the life will not get easier. But I will become stronger. And when I become stronger, I am able to fight any sorts of of, of difficulties that come into my life. To overcome any source of difficulties that comes against me. Amen. Hallelujah. When something hits our lives, something, something difficult comes against us, hits our lives, there are three, three choices that we can make. Three things that we can choose from. First one, or we just go back to our old life and say, damn, I can't do this Christian life. This is so difficult. I'm just going to go back and do the same thing that I used to do. Second one, we come to church, but we stay in the place of defeat, not forgiving, crying all the time, complaining all the time, because we complain that we gossip all the time, and then we are bitter all the time, and then we are mad all the time. And we lead that miserable life that Jesus did not die for, right? That's what I said in the beginning. The third one is we can choose to be overcomer. And that's what God wants us tonight 
to learn. Option one and option two are not options. You can't go back. If you know Jesus, you want to go back to your old life, your life was going to be more miserable than it was before. It's not an option. Number two, option two is not an option. Because you come to church, but you choose to still be miserable all the time, and you do nothing about it. You change nothing in your life. You take no action whatsoever, and you pretend that something will change. You hope that something will change. I did say this a few months ago when I preached. That's called insanity. Keep doing the same thing and pretend something will change. But the third option is the one that we look forward. We keep our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And he will lead you into the place of victory. Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. I would like to share a testimony of mine because um, I do strongly believe that the best sermons comes out of your own pain and experience, don't they? Uh, about two and a half years ago, in a matter of one day, my life turned upside down, completely upside down. I lost everything that I worked so hard, tirelessly for four years. Everything in one day. My job, finances, my friends, my church, every single thing in one day. Devastating. Devastating. I just, not only I wanted to throw this towel, towel down, you know, but I wanted to quit everything. Ministry, everything. Church, everything. I allowed so much bitterness and anger because of the disappointment. And unforgiveness in my heart that I was completely in the place of like, oh, Jesus. It was, mis it, it was bad. It was very bad. And I was walking that way every single day. I was mad at God. I was so mad at God. And even though I was so bitter, I was so much in pain, and I allowed so many things to come inside of me, there is always a still voice of God. You know why? Because God is close to those who are brokenhearted, who are crushed in the spirit, right? There's always a still voice of God that speaks to you even in the midst of your pain. Be very careful to listen to it. Do not neglect it because that small voice, and I know it's very hard to be obedient, but that small voice can change your life forever. That small voice to me on the midst of that pain said to me, go to church, Ariana. Go to church, Ariana. And I, in the midst of my pain, I was obedient. And I came to this church first time. And I came to this church. Even though I was obedient to God, I was still mad at him. I was still full of hate and unforgiveness and bitterness and pain. And like, oh, my goodness. Even in the midst of me hating God, God loved me. You know why? Because he opened a door and he brought into my life Pastor Virginia and Pastor Mauricia who helped me to come out of that situation. But, however, my, my, my heart that was broken and my feelings and my emotion and my mind and my every pain that I had did not go away. This, it was still there. I was walking every day like that for months and months and months and months. And no matter what people will tell me, no matter what people would encourage me, no matter what people, people will pray for me. And they will say, Ariona, you are worth it and you are this and you are that and don't listen to the lies of enemy. And ta -ta 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 -ta. You know, no matter what people will say, nothing worked. Nothing worked. And sometimes, sometimes it's like, it's, uh, sometimes when we are in the place of pain, our feelings and emotions are so active, aren't they? Right? So when our feelings and emotions are so active, it's much easier to go to people for help than rather to go to God. Isn't it? Hallelujah. Because and we, we, we keep believing that people can ease our pain. 
by calling them and by asking, can you pray for me? And by, by uh, 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 you know, having them all the time being involved in our lives and our pain, you know. So, so and, and, and truly, truly speaking, we are living in the place of emotion and feelings. Now, Pastor Maurice, it was about two weeks ago, right? And he preached and he said, like, we are living in a generation that we are so active in our feelings and in our emotions. Right? We are, we are guided by our feelings and by our emotions. Now, when we are in the place of feelings and emotions, when we live based on feelings and emotions, our eyes are not anymore in Jesus, but our eyes are on people. And when we put our focus on people, we put a high standard of expectation towards people. And people will fail you. They will let you down because people are not perfect. People are broken. And then we please, and when we put expectation on them, we get more hurt. And it's like that kind of cycle goes around and around and around. Like, oh, she didn't say hi to me. He didn't say hi to me. He, she did not smile to me. He, she did not hug me. How dare this and he and she. And we keep our eyes on people and we get even more hurt. We get even more deep in the pit than we are. And, of course, God is going to use people in our life, you know, and God uses people to pray with us, to pray for us, to encourage us. But not on the day that you put people before God. Not on the day that you make people your God rather than God. People are not your Savior. There is only one Savior, and his name is Jesus Christ. He has the, he has the power to heal you. He has the power to restore you no matter what you're going through. Amen? Hallelujah. So going back to my story. Uh, months, as I said, months I was going into the place of depression. Depression, stress, anxiety in a very dark place. And I shared this actually with Brave uh, a week ago. But I just want to elaborate a little, uh, a little bit more on it. And I was... I was sitting, it was a Sunday, and I was sitting right there in front row, and Pastor Mauricio was preaching, and he was preaching his sermon. Within his sermon, there was a scripture, Revelation 2.4, and this is what God says, nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. And there is another verse after this that says that you have left your first, ver uh, uh, your le left your first love. Can I have my phone, please? I'm just going to open it there. Thank you. That you have left your first love. I, start, I, I went into my tears when God, when God spoke to me. Because this verse, it is so hard in my heart. It was like, oh, my God. Because really, I did live the first love of God. Going into the place of bitterness. And then... I'm like, okay, God, but how can I love you? How can I love you? Because I don't feel anything, Jesus. I don't feel nothing. I, there is nothing in me that loves you, God. I don't feel anything. I'm so completely numb. How can I, how can I love you? Now the next scripture that goes... In this scripture, if you check the verse 5, because I'm not finding it here, it says, okay, here it is. Thank you so much, media. Those are great, those guys there. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works. Repent and do the first works. And I'm like, God, I don't feel anything, you know, like I don't love you anymore. It's so much, I'm so much in pain. It's so much in numb that I don't, how do I do? How do I get back to your first love? Now when God gives you what to do, God is going to give you how to do it as well. Do you see here anything that God says like, uh, uh, remember therefore from where you've fallen, repent and do the first work. Is God saying anything? If you feel so, repent. God says, repent and do the first work. So God is calling us into action. It's an action that we need to put up, up there, right? 
A call to action is like, I first need to repent, and then I need to do the first works. What are the first works? When I was first in love with Jesus, what did I do? And then I had to go back to myself and like think, what was I doing when I was in love with Jesus? I used to praise him. I used to worship him. I used to pray. I used to study the Bible. I used to dance to him. I used to spend time with him. I used to couldn't stay, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't wait to spend time with him. That's how much I loved him. That was my first love with Jesus. And I'm like, I don't need to feel it. I just need to do the works. So what I started, this was Sunday. I repented. And then on Monday I woke up. At 5 a.m. in the morning, I went to the edge of my bed. And at the ed edge of my bed, I start worshiping. I start worshiping God. I felt nothing. I was so dry. I love you, Jesus. Nothing. Dry. Tuesday. Same thing, dry. Wednesday. Same thing, dry. Felt nothing. I love you, Jesus. Come, not, nothing within this body wanted to do it. Nothing. Everything was against it. Thursday, even worse. So bad. Literally so bad that I said to God and I thought like, literally, I said to myself and I said to God, I don't think I can come back. I have gone so way so far from you. I don't think I can find my way back to you. That's how bad it was. I couldn't even speak. I couldn't even say anything. I couldn't even, nothing. I was so dry. Have you ever felt that before? Like so dry. And I was kind of afraid, like, dang. At that moment, we think that, that when that happens, we can, we can come at that place that, oh, Lord. We can come at that place that I'm just going to give up. It's very easy for us to just give up, right? When we see that God is not moving, God is not doing anything. And then, of, and then I said to myself and I said to God, God, Siri, could you please take this? Thank you. <laughs> Siri has his own mind, right? So, and then, and then I said to God on Thursday, God, no matter how I feel, no matter what happens into my life, no matter that I ne will never feel nothing for you, I will still worship you. I will still seek you. I will still, still be there for you no matter what. And I woke up on Friday. I woke up on Friday and I went on the edge of my bed again. And I started worshiping again. Oh, my God, right at that moment when I just opened my mouth and I started worshiping, such a presence of God fell into my room that this overwhelming love of Jesus just took me over in that kind of, oh, Lord, in that kind of way that, oh, my God, that, that I didn't know where I was. All that heaviness, all that depression, the suicidal thoughts, all that pain, the heart brokenness, it just lifted off of me. And you know why? Because I did not quit. I did not give up. It's very easy to throw in the towel if we are not getting our things in the time when we want it. It's very easy. When we, God is not responding when we want him to respond. But because I did not give up, he came through. Oh my God, all that heaviness, everything that I was feeling, he just lifted off of me. And more I would, oh, and that literally the scriptures that is in James, I think it's James 6, 6, 6 11, the scripture that says in the, in the, oh, Jesus. Psalms, sorry, Psalms 16, 11. Look what it says. You will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. That scripture literally became alive in my room. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. There was so much joy in my heart that, oh, my God. And every day I kept doing it. I kept doing it because I wanted more, and I wanted more, and I wanted more. And I knew how life was without it. I knew it was so devastating. It was so bad. I couldn't even breathe. But in his presence, there is fullness of joy, and I could not leave that. I could not leave that place of refugee for me because this was life for me. 
Their presence lifted up my heaviness. Their, their, their presence lifted up my pain. Healed my broken heart. His presence. And I would take Jesus with me everywhere, not only in the morning, but everywhere I would go. I would say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I would pray all day long. I would have constant communication with Jesus all day long. He became my best friend again. Again. But this kind of commitment with God is not done when, only when something bad hits our life, is it? But it's a constant Everyday thing, which is called lifestyle. This is a lifestyle that you do every single day. We don't go into our knees only when the storm hits. We go into our knees because we love Jesus. Amen. So you know the, the, the story of Noah? How many of you here know the story of Noah? Yeah, of course, you're dieharders. Now, so the story of Noah is that Noah built an ark for God, right? Did Noah build the ark when it was rainy and there was storm or did Noah build the ark when it was sunny? God wants us to build our ark when it's sunny days. When we are, when we don't have challenges, when we don't have problems. He wants to build our, he wants us to build our ark. And you know what is, what is our ark? Our spiritual inner man. He wants us to strengthen our spiritual inner man every single day. So when the storm is going to hit you, you will be able to stand. You will not be moved. You will not be shaken because the word sustains you. And because of the word of God, you will be able to say to this mountain, be cast away into the sea and the mountain will be moved. No matter what storm comes against you. Amen. God is a person, God, God is a person who longs for relationship 24-7. Not only when we wake up in the morning, 30 minutes. Or five minutes before we go to sleep. Oh, sorry, God, man, I didn't have time for you today. But I love you. Good night. <laughs> That's not a relationship. God is not a cow that can be milked. Busy. God longs for a relationship 24-7. So you talk to him every single day. Whatever you go, you say, thank you, Lord, for my car. Thank you for taking me from point A to point B. Thank you for this food that I'm eating. Thank you for this person I just met. Thank you for the traffic. Thank you for the weather. Thank you for the streets. Thank you. I'm healthy. I can breathe. I can think. I can move. I can walk. All the people don't even wake up in the morning and I woke up. He wants constant relationship with us. He wants us to be real with him, to make him as our best friend. And the reason why God, and God has given us a, form, a formula how to be his best friends, how to have a relationship with him. Let's go please to my scripture of 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 18. Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in everything. This is formula that God gives us how to have a relationship with him. When God says pray without ceasing, it's not like, God, I pray I want this and this and this and this and this and that. No. is you talk to him. You thank him. You praise him. You worship him. You love on him. You let him love on you. It's a two-way relationship. That's when you pray and you pray and all the t every place you go, it's just like, God, give favor to this person. God, bless that person. God, you are so good. You are so good. These people are walking. These people are breathing. You are so good for having the sun come over the sinners and the righteous. You are so good for giving us one more day to every single person in this earth to get to know you, to have a chance to go to heaven. This is without, praying without season, give thanks for everything. And the next scripture that I have, how God is going to show to us, Joshua 1, 7, 9. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. 
for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. That's when you will live in the place of victory if you take this Bible and you meditate on it day and night. What is God saying? Pray without ceasing. He's using the word without ceasing. Night and day. Without ceasing. Meditate night and day. Pray without ceasing. Meditate night and day. 24-7. Constant relationship. Because only the word of God will be able to sustain you in every kind of difficulties that you are in. He wants you to know this. Because this is life. This is going to keep you. Amen. And because this is going to keep you, then you will make your way prosperous. Who is going to make your way prosperous? Who? You. I do that. How? Meditating on this, praying without ceasing, making my God my best friend every single day from the morning till evening, 24 7 for the rest of my life. And the reason why God wants this kind of relationship for us is because He wants to teach us. Because when a storm will hit you, when a storm will hit you, whatever difficulty is going to hit you, He wants us to be prepared. Hallelujah, that not only we will, that when the storm hits us, not only we will stand strong, but those around us that are going through the same struggle that we go through, they are going to find refuge under your ark. That's why you need to build your ark. Amen. In the sunny days. Hallelujah. Since I started doing this, God became to me like a rain in the desert. Oh, my God. I can't wait to wake up. I can't wait to be with him. Because when you choose to be with him, when you choose to have him in the forefront of your eyes, in everything that we do, everywhere you go, in every single thing, you are going to be so sensitive to the spirit of God. You will be so sensitive to the voice of God. You will hear him, and you will have the strength to be obedient to him. And when you are obedient to him, the blessings will chase you. Because the scripture says, when you are obedient, the blessings will chase you. And that's how you go from a place of victim into the place of victory. And you live a life of an overcomer. Amen. And, uh, and uh, oh, hallelujah. Life is not going to get better because, uh, because you are a nice person. Life is not going to become better because you think you are cold. Life is not going to become better because you actually think that, uh, that I'm talented. Will it? You know how life will get better? If you fight every day. If you get up and fight every day, that's how your life will become better. Satan every day is going to try to force this towel in your hand. Because Satan is like a roaring lion every single day, 24-7, never sleeps, never goes for vacation. 24-7 around your life just to see if you open a little door. Just to come in to kill, steal, and destroy. But God has come to give life and in abundance. And where is that found? In Jesus. Amen. And God is calling us to fight the good fight of faith. Let's fight the good fight of faith in Timothy. 1 Timothy 6, 12. Oh, hallelujah. Can I have the scripture please? 1 Timothy 6, 12. Fight the good fight of faith. It's a fight. We are living in a war. It's a spiritual fight every day. But what kind of fight is it? Fight of faith. It's a fight of faith. Where does the faith come from? From the word of God. From going to the word of God. By spending time with God. By meditating on it day and night, right? Oh, hallelujah. It is, it is beautiful, the life, until the storm hits, isn't it? Hmm? Let's see the Revelation 12, 11. What do we see here? We see another formula here. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Three things. Let's tear this apart. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Who is the lamb? Jesus Christ, right? They overcame by the blood of the lamb. Is that Jesus already has overcome any difficulties for us. 
He has won the victory for us on the cross by his blood. He died on the cross. He poured out his blood. So we live a life of victorious. Amen. Amen. And we have to believe in whom? In Jesus. Because our victory comes by believing in Jesus Christ. We become an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. By believing in Jesus Christ. And the second one is by the word of their testimony. What are the words of their testimony? Is the Bible, is the scripture. These are the word of the testimony. When we go here and we study it and we read it and we speak it. When we speak it, the word has power. It becomes word of our testimony. We overcome by speaking the word of God. By studying the word of God. By meditating on the word of God. Amen. And the third one is... And did not love their lives to the death. Did not love their lives to the death. What does that mean? They crucified their flesh. To become an overcomer, you need to crucify your flesh every single day. You have two options every morning. Wake up. Crucify your flesh or submit your flesh. Crucify your flesh or you submit your flesh. You crucify your flesh or you submit your flesh. Which one you choose? And you do that from the morning and to the lunch and to the evening and all day long. You crucify to your flesh or you submit to your flesh. That's a choice that we make every single day. Every choice we have, we do throughout the day, it has a consequence. Because when we choose to submit to flesh, we walk as defeated. We walk hopeless all the time. Poor me and poor me and poor me and poor me and poor me. And we become Christians of feelings. I don't feel to go to church, so I'm not going to church. I don't feel to read the Bible, so I'm reading the Bible. I don't feel to pray, so I'm not going to pray. That's, that's, that's literally satisfying the flesh kind of life. And that's where, you know, the only place where that's going to take you? Destruction. You know faith? We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the faith that we have in God. Believing is a choice. Believing in God is a choice. Faith has two components. Believing and speaking. Believing and speaking. Believing and speaking. Faith has two components. Believing on it and speaking on it. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus said, I am the resurrection, says the Lord. I am the resurrection, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection. I heard from a pastor. It was a beautiful thing to hear. I heard from a pastor that actually said he made a study word about the resurrection. And you know what that word resurrection means? It means that I am the stand up and the recovery. Jesus says, I am the stand up and I am the recovery. When we fall on the floor because of whatever difficulties that we are in, we fall on our knees. And the only reason we fall on our knees is to seek Jesus, is to seek Jesus. And when we fall on our knees to seek Jesus, he is going to grab us and stand us up. In every situation, he's going to grab you and stand you up strong. And he will recover you whatever Satan has stolen from you. Amen.